On this episode of TQA Weekly, I answer a viewer question and explain everything you need to know about PCI Express. TQA Weekly. I am the host, Steve Smith, aka at Axis. Thank you for watching and or subscribing. If ever you have any technology questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, ask at tqaweekly.com or head over to my website, tqaweekly.com, and use our brand new contact form, which actually prevents spam by having people validate instead of using reCAPTCHA. So, for those for, that watched last week, I had one listener watcher, Ryan Reidner, ask a very important connect, uh, question which has to do with connecting your fan to your computer or your motherboard. So first, of course, all fans, hold on, let's get this one out of the way. All fans have their own connectors. Most of them will have this type of connector, which is actually, you probably have already seen it before, which is a three pin. CPU fans will have four pins, but most fans only have three pins in them. And the pins themselves going from the top, okay, on the far left is the speed indicator. The middle, which is red, is the hot wire, the positive, and the black wire on the far right is the ground. What you want to do is make sure that the ground and the hot wire are always on the right side of the connection if we are facing the top little piece of plastic on the motherboard as being the top as well. So that is one way of connecting. The problem is, is when you're trying to connect a bunch of these big fans onto your motherboard, it may not be able to power them completely, or as I actually prefer to say it, it may actually believe that these fans can spin lower than their intended speed. This is a 700 RPM fan and it's supposed to spin at 700 RPM. And short of using a fan controller, which you still can't put down lower than 100%, the other solution is using a Molex to fan adapter. So all you need to do, and this counts for you, Ryan, is connect this, by the way, very cheap in a computer store, to your fan. So you connect this, and you connect that to your power supply. You can daisy chain them, and then take all these wires and hide them behind the other panel behind your motherboard with no problems. You can even get a cap to go on the end of the Molex to prevent any issues with electricity and grounding against the box. So you can actually connect this to the power supply, daisy chain them and have them spinning at full speed. And the great thing about these bigger fans is because they only spin at one specific speed, they tend not to make that much noise at all. So that is actually the way you connect it to your computer. You can try to connect it against your motherboard but it may or may not work, depends on how much power your board has and if it understands that these spin at a very specific speed. So that is the solution for you. This week we're gonna be talking about PCIe or the Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. It is an expansion slot technology which is relatively new and it is used to replace PCIe slots and still actually because it's relatively new, brings a lot of questions to light about how to use it correctly. The reason is because the, for the most longest time in history, we were under the impression that the cards that are meant to plug into certain slots had a very specific size and specification. Not using them correctly meant we shorted out our computer. So it is actually a very understandable thing to be confused about PCIe and I will demystify it for you. So first, the PCIe cards talk using logical connection called an interconnect, which is point-to-point -point channels of communication between two PCIe ports allowing for ordinary PCI style request. A PCI card can come in either 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and even 32 slots, uh, lane sizes with an X prefix. So you will normally find this on your main board box as having a X16, X8, X1 reference. There is currently no popular or common main boards that support the X32 slot size on consumer boards for this moment. 
and most main boards will have at least an X16 PCIe slot, maybe even several X1s, a single X8 or more, and if we're lucky, an X4 or X8 slot. There's not too many X2 slots out there. A lane is comprised of two different signaling pairs, one for receiving data, one for sending data, and it amounts to having four traces per lane. Using some simple math, we know that if there's four traces per lane and you have an X16 card, it will have 64 traces. So if ever you lose the manual, all you need to do is count how many traces there are on the board. An X8 card will have 32, an X4 card will have 16, and so forth. Another fact about PCIe cards and their related slots is under normal circumstances, using a closed N slot. An X16 or X8 cannot fit inside a smaller slot unless it is open-ended or you open it. Plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that carefully and remember to unplug your computer before you open the end. Opening the end only changes one thing for that card. Because it will have fewer lanes to negotiate with, it will run slower but it will still work. And for the reverse, can you plug an X1, X2, X4, or X8 into a X8, X16, or X32 slot? Yes, you can actually. In fact, it is backwards compatible as well. Not only can you plug an X1 card, let's say Wi-Fi, into your X16 slot on your micro ATX board, if the graphics adapter built into your motherboard is good enough for what you're doing, but you do not even have to worry too much about the generations. There are three versions, version one, two, and three, each being the double the speed of the previous. So if ever you were actually trying to figure out whether you should buy the graphics card that you want, which is a version three, while you still had a version two PCIe board, go ahead. The only issue I'm gonna stipulate is power from your power supply. So in that case, just make sure you read the manual of your main board and the manual of your graphics card that you wanna buy and make sure you have enough wattage coming off your power supply to actually support its power needs. It will run slower, but it will still work. So that basically answers the question. What can you do with a PCIe card inside your computer? So very simply, you can ignore the versioning. It will only run slower. You can ignore the size since any will work in any slot. And if ever it's closed, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there explaining how to open end any PCIe card slot you want. Just make sure you unplug your computer first and not try to watch the video at the same time as you're doing it. You might short yourself out. Next week, I'll be talking about byte range. Most of you don't know what byte range is. I'll explain what it is, what it does for our experience of the internet, and how it applies to all us podcasters on the internet that use iTunes as a, how do we say, collection point for our, all our shows. Have a great day. Thank you for subscribing and or watching, and goodbye. Thank you for listening to TKOA Weekly. Show your support by liking this episode, subscribe to get our latest episodes as they come out, and share with friends and family who may benefit from such a show as this. You may send us your questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories to ask at tqaweekly.com. For our show notes, links to our Android application, alternate means of subscribing to our show, and information on joining our weekly newsletter, head over to tqaweekly.com. Stay safe and online, and have a great day.